four minutes after the hour, wherever you are across the globe. Uh, just an amazing broadcast that we have today, amazing guests. <laughs> we have got so many questions of people wondering where Deborah Tavares has gone. Her website, her main website is uh, stopthecrime.net, also primarywater.org. You know, we've been talked to we've been beat over the head with the idea of peak oil well peak water another lie primarywater.org stopthecrime.net please go to our website and sign up we're talking about uh, the Vebra, Deborah Tavares she's been an activist everybody knows or has heard of her I believe um, we've talked incessantly about the Declaration of Independence the Bill of Rights on this show and the organic law that came down common law, came from our inheritance from uh, Europe, whatever, came here to America. The seceding and the pulling apart of our inheritance from our humanity, from our divinity, and turning us into cattle to be used by an overarching system, satanic pedophile network that wants to control our lives, is what we're talking about. Deborah Tavares is about to break down this deconstruction, then we'll go from there and get into whatever. Deborah, it is an absolute pleasure to talk to you. We have so much to talk about. Welcome to the Power Hour. Well, Daniel, thank you so much. And everyone that's listening, please grab a pencil and paper and take some notes and uh, share because this is a significant deviation from past conversations that you may have heard. Now, Daniel, I've done so many YouTubes, and you can just type in Deborah Tavares um, YouTubes, and you can watch them. There's lots of recommendations, certainly USA Inc. and how the United States is really being run. And that's crazy critical as a foundational comment here before I get into breaking news. Um, I met uh, James Traficant. I had the privilege of meeting him at a conference in 2012. And for those of you that know his work, he repeatedly brought to the floor of Congress incessantly over many years uh, about the reality of the United States bankruptcy. And he was known for his um, two- and three-minute speeches about the bankruptcy of the United States. And this is what he said in part. He said, Mr. Speaker, we are here in Chapter 11. Members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in the world's history, the U.S. government. We are setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. There are some who say it's a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. And he goes on to say it's an established fact. The United States federal government was dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act of March 9, 1933. He goes on to cite the public laws, etc. He says it dissolved our sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States government offices. Um, office, officials, departments, and is further evidence that the United States government exists today in name only. Now, James Traficant was uh, brought up on trumped-up charges and served seven years in prison. He died a few years ago in a very questionable tractor accident while in his barn. And uh, I would recommend that everyone take a look at his work. Uh, he has a book uh, called America's Last Minute Man. And when I met him, we were talking about climate action plans. People, you know, certainly know certain aspects of our reality, and there's just a wide range of circumstances that make up our reality. And as Dr. Stan Monteith used to say when I was up on his radio show with him, he said, it's reality, not illusion or delusion, that will determine what the future will bring. And this is what we are going to be talking about today, our reality and the changes that are besetting our country right now. And I'm going to jump into something in a bit, but I'm going to toss this out now for you to think about. You need to understand that the word climate change, UN Agenda 21, and 2030 have a new frontier of climate change, and it's called resilience. And we're going to get into that because Rothschild is coming to North America to restructure North America, and I will talk about that after I talk about some breaking news out of California that most of you likely did not hear about. Um, we've known for years that cell phones, 
Of course, we can include smart meters. All of the wireless technology have been damaging to our health. And there is a health advisory from the California Health Office, and uh, it, it advises cell phone use limits. And you've not heard of this because they won't tell you. And cell phone frequencies have become brain addicting. They're addictive. And now that we're faced with cell phone addiction, we're being warned by the California Department of Health to limit our cell phone use. Keep in mind that the Departments of Health are behind fluoridation in all communities, required vaccinations, and the Department acknowledges climate change as being caused by too many people using too much stuff. That's genocide. When we roll off our tongues that climate change is a result of too many people using too much stuff, we're talking genocide. And that's become an easy roll-off-the-tongue expression for the false science of climate change and global warming. And, of course, the Department of Health ignores global corporate weather control systems that are artificially creating the climate change that we're all experiencing on a massive global situation everywhere. And that's where the new name, Resilience, is going to come in that I'm going to talk about. Also, keep in mind that the article that exposes this uh, cell phone limitation is a cover-up to camouflage the health effects from the deployment of Wi-Fi in our homes, Wi-Fi hotspots, antennas, cell towers throughout our neighborhoods, the smart meters attached to all our homes, wirelessly transmitting reads to the utility companies, along with wireless smart appliances, etc., just to name a few. And there are assaults on all living things. And, of course, their article and their warning is blaming us for the damage we are inflicting upon ourselves by technologies being used. And these technologies are a silent weapons system of warfare against us. And when this uh, forced requirement advisory by the California Public Health Department came out, we were told that they were keeping this information hidden for years and that the California's public health had, had to release a draft document outlining the concerns about cell phone radiation and exposure. This was hidden. Now, everyone that's listening, my take-home message of this broadcast today is to turn off as often as possible all of your wireless devices. I realize they have become addictive, and that's why now they're dancing around with this advisory. They're also, it's also a beta test to see if you're told that it's cancer-causing and causes ailments of all kinds that feeds our sicknesses into big pharma to see if you will put them down. And they're trusting that we won't because we're always already brain entrained. Now, I want to read something else that Rothschild puts out in his monthly utility bills here uh, in Southern California. And Rothschild is the face of Pacific Gas and Electric and Edison International in Southern California. And everyone must realize that the California Public Utility Commission is just a fake commission to make it appear that they're regulations over the utilities. They're not. And for many of you that heard my YouTube that I did two and a half years ago on Jeff Rent's radio network while Jeff was the host and I had my show there as well, it's, um, there are several versions of this that I see now on the Internet, but um, the complete one that's a, a, a two-part radio show talks about the two methods of the plan to burn up Northern California. So for those of you who have not heard this YouTube, the plan to burn up Northern California, this applies to Southern California as well. Our research team found documents um, exchanged between the California Public Utility Commission and Pacific Gas and Electric. And I'm going to let you look at those documents. You can find that in a shorter YouTube called Agenda 21, the plans to burn up Northern California. But the longer two-hour version is the second plan to burn up Northern California, which has not quite yet happened. So uh, I caution you, we have been told by our governor here in California that this is a new normal due to climate change. There is nothing new about this normal. This is artificially created weather globally. And in my absence, many of you were questioning where I have been. I will tell you 
that oftentimes people that do this deep research need to take a deep breath and look around and absorb the enormity of this um, situation that is besetting all of us. But I will tell you, we traveled to Russia. We wanted to see what Russia looked like in the midst of this global takedown of humanity. We wanted to see what South America looked like, and we did. And I can talk more about that in an ensuing radio show. And I hear a commercial coming up, so I will pick this up on the other side of the break. Yeah, you're great, Deborah. You don't need me. Hold, hold that thought. My goodness. So uh, pleased and uh, lucky to be talking to Deborah Tavares today. And it's been a while since she's been out here with this information. She spent some time. She's uh, gone away, backed away for a minute, looked, resurveyed, recalculated, recommitted to this information. You got to understand, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody like Deborah. You know, I get emails, why don't you do this or do that? Somebody like Deborah, who's empathetic, who cares, who's sacrificing so, so much and delving into these very dangerous, very important topics and what they risk, I hope that you appreciate what she's telling you. StopTheCrime.net is her, her uh, website, PrimaryWaters.org is another one she wants to focus on. Those two websites, you can sign up at StopTheCrime.net. This is the crime of the millenniums is going on right now and here's Deborah Tavares risking everything to tell you these things it is your Daniel, job I, is... I'm going to go ahead and say it go ahead go ahead Deborah yeah Daniel that's exactly right and I was uh, on the other side of the break getting ready to talk about the inserts that are in our utility bills and I was telling everybody that the utilities across the country are run by Rothschild um, we discovered this uh, several years ago when I was actually down at a uh, shareholders meeting at Pacific Gas and Electric in San Francisco. And uh, when they announced Rothschild was there in the first front rows, I was unaware of that connection. And after researching it, I figured it out. And, of course, it's important to understand because what they're telling us in our monthly inserts in our utility bills is understanding electro magnetic fields and here's what they say they say electro and electric magnetic fields are present everywhere electricity flows around appliances and power lines in offices at schools and homes many researchers believe that if there is a risk of adverse health effects from residential exposure to electromagnetic frequencies it is probably just at the detection limit of human health studies nonetheless the possible risk warrants further investigation. The varying results from epidemiological studies, which looked at estimated EMF exposures and childhood leukemia, are consistent. Laboratory studies, including investigating the possible mechanism for health effects, provide little or no evidence to support this weak link. And then they go on to say, this is very important, they go on to say that the results from many this is double speak. This is why we are confused. This is why we are batted around, because we're hearing one thing and another. But this is it. The results from many research studies have been um, elevated by international, national, and California electromagnetic research programs to determine whether electromagnetic frequencies pose any health risks. Given the uncertainty of the issue, the medical and scientific communities have been unable to conclude that usual residential exposures to electromagnetic frequencies cause health. So then they go on to tell us that they're going to tell us in here how as individuals we can reduce our own exposure. So what they're telling us is that the increased use of mind control, all of the hidden um, neurological disruption disruptors uh, in our, in our uh, streets and communities modulating our moods, may not be a problem. So I'm going to now jump into the California fires because I want to get into the criminals now that are heading up the restoration of Northern California. The criminals are now employed. But it's important to know that there were 30 different fires over a holiday weekend of October 8th through the 9th. Monday was Columbus Day. And many documents that I've observed, Daniel, they warn about attacks on three-day weekends. 
Now, whether this was that, I'm just saying that's what I have read. So it was Columbus Day on Monday, and the fires struck on Monday. They were significant and out of control, and we were helping family members evacuate. Many of our families lost homes. Um, many friends and neighbors lost homes. But there were multiple fires that raged. It killed 43 people and destroyed 8,900 structures across 245,000 acres of land. And this is significant because after the fires, we have been flooded by law firms that are uh, bringing litigation against PG&E, who admits, PG&E admits, inadequate vegetation and tree removal from their equipment. Why are they admitting that? Obviously because their records are going to show that they weren't um, taking care of their equipment as they should. But also because Rothschild knows should victories occur against them, they're going to just charge the ratepayers ultimately back in the long run. That's what will happen. But uh, what we do know is that they certainly don't want anyone to know about Rothschild's connection with weather modification. They've got permits pulled in Northern California, as I discuss in the plan to burn up Northern California. So it's extremely important how this cover-up is going forward. And what's also uh, important to understand is even before the fires, PG&E was on criminal probation due to the San Bruno gas line explosion. For those of you you may remember, a neighborhood was blown off the map, and PG&E was under and is under criminal investigation for that. And it's important to understand, here in Sonoma County, uh, we have lost um, $18.5 million of property tax income for the first year after the fires. They are crippling Sonoma County and setting us up for the plans that we're going to talk about. But I do want to say I attended many fire meetings, insurance, attorneys, and city uh, councils and government meetings as well after the fires. And I, would, I am sad to say these victims that were suffering in many instances from PTSD after the um, abrupt evacu evacuations of their homes at one and two and three in the morning, leaving oftentimes with just their pajamas, shoes. Many people um, did not get out. Again, 43 people were killed. A family of four was killed in Northern California in one of the other fires as they were on foot trying to escape, and their son was burned alive. The daughter was significantly burned and died later, and the husband and wife, um, to my last uh, knowledge, are still in the hospital with heavy burns. This is a crime. This is a monumental global crime of weather control and what they are doing globally with the artificially created weather. They're building false markets on top of this. This is what the climate action plans are all about that I've talked about many, many times. But when I went to some of these meetings with these fire victims uh, and these community meetings, I observed the Delphi technique being um, deployed on these people. And what do I mean by that? We would go to large buildings, large halls, and they would tell everybody on the radio that they could meet up with the various um, corporations that were here to help them. The uh, EPA, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, uh, City um, Debra. Uh, Department. Debra, let's, yeah. hold that. Let, let's hold that thought there on the other side. Let's get into that. we got a quick break. Two-minute break. We'll be right back. Deborah Tavares. Six minutes after the hour, we are talking to Deborah Tavares from StopTheCrime.net. We're discussing weather modification and being used, basically deployment, the smart meters of a weapon, and that weapon is being used and triggered last fall in the Northern California area. Deborah, what is the end game here? Just continue with what you're saying. Well, I, mean, I, I certainly just... will get to that, Daniel, but I need to work into what this uh, these weather hits look like here because they are going to look similar in other areas of the country with the various destructive 
uh, hits that they do. And it's important to know who the criminals are that come to the rescue in your community, in your city. And they're there now because we have many areas in the country that has had massive devastation, massive housing losses, increased homelessness across the board. So I'm just going to say right now, uh, James uh, Lee Witt, the former Clinton era Federal Emergency Management Agency Administrator, was tapped in October to lead the fire recovery nonprofit Rebuild North Bay. Now he has come out of the Georgia tornado uh, area and he uh, was uh, helping out there too. So it's important to know that he headed FEMA in the 90s, but more recently he founded a corporation called EB5 Global Management. And what that means, it seeks to capitalize on a controversial U.S. law that grants fast-track permanent resident status to foreign nationals in exchange for large investments in American development projects. This is a pay-to-stay scheme, and he is coordinating these investments of foreign capital. And this is leading to homogenization of our communities. We will not ever go back to the way that Sonoma County was because of the traumatization, the lack of um, adequate insurance and replacement costs. Many, many people will not be able to rebuild, and that is important. And when we looked across the spectrum of prior uh, weapon hits like Stan like a Superstorm Sandy and Harvey and a variety of other uh, areas that were hit, we found a common uh, thread. And what was really disturbing is um, the fact that when people were told, the local governments and nonprofits were trying to recover from the major disasters, they've learned the hard way that money, money spent on protective measures or cleanup and rebuilding is not always reimbursed by the U.S. government, and homeowners are getting the bills. So this is important. Then we find foreclosures, and then we see grabbing properties, and that is what we're seeing nationwide right now with all of these storms. Now, it's further important right, let me, to understand. Yes. Let me pause you one second. Let me pause you one second to go over this. What you're saying is there has been a plan Exercise California is ground zero for this, where the smart meters, energy-directed weapon has basically obliterated the area. They come back in, they use it to take over the property, and that this is a plan that's going to be implemented throughout different areas of the country? This, this is no, going to that's continue. not exactly what I said. All those words are part of what I am talking about. But what I, what I am saying is that we were hit. Uh, this was a hit, and uh, smart meters likely were involved. Sadly, though, the, um, the agency that is going to determine the cause of the fire, which is CAL FIRE, they are involved in uh, climate change agendas. In other words, they're part of the destructive corporate takeover of the global populations. And so we will never, and I'm sure we will never find that the, um, the smart meters were involved, nor will we ever hear that there was a laser hit or, or weather as a result of these fires caused these fires. We had tremendous winds that night, very hot winds, and we were very, very dry. And I want to add a few things. In some of the areas that you may have heard about on the news, um, certainly across the 101 freewall that uh, burned down on the hill, that re went through a neighborhood of 1,500 houses. I went through that there uh, recently with my husband in the cleanup efforts, and they are scooping out the dirt about, uh, oh, anywhere from 10 to 18 inches deep off of each lot until they get to what um, the EPA is determining as non-toxic material. And they're taking out all the concrete footings and foundations and slabs. And that is what they're carting off here to our local landfills in a variety of ways. But after the very first rain, which was in about a week and a half after the fires, and we drove through that area, there were ponds, uh, one after another, of all of the homes, the ones at the time at least, that had been cleared out. The water had been scooped, the 
the dirt had been scooped out, and there were sitting ponds. And at the bottom of those scoop outs was uh, clay, and it does not perk. It does not penetrate into the ground. So they were sitting ponds. As a result, we went to the uh, Marin Sonoma Vector Control Meeting to ask them about the expectations of mosquitoes this mosquito season. And I will tell you, Daniel, that we were told that uh, already California, because of the heat, is experiencing early uh, larva development, and they expect an enormous Mm. mosquito problem this year, and they're concerned about West Nile virus. So we're getting a one-two punch, and, of course, they will spray all of those homes. Now, everyone, you need to keep in mind, um, up in the Fountain Grove area, which were those luxury homes, uh, we now call that Fountain Grave. There's nothing really there. There's maybe 5% of the homes. That's it. It looks like a war-torn, uh, very um, uh, expensive community up on the hill where family members lost their homes and et cetera. But there's swimming pools and hot tubs and all kinds of divots in the ground. Uh, they're not pumping the swimming pools. They'll start tearing those out, too, because if they pump them out, they just pop right out of the ground. And some homeowners have not signed up for FEMA and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to clean their pads because what will happen if there's any leftover uh, unclaimed funds in their insurance policies, we're understanding at this point that those funds will go to FEMA. So these homeowners have to be very careful as they march forward in how they work through this disaster with their insurance companies, and it is horrific, I can assure you. The uh, very few days after the fire on the front page of the San Francisco Chronicle, they said disease to trees pointed at the fires. And then they say sudden oak death likely helped to spread the flames. Okay, everyone needs to understand I've done lots of radio um, conversations about sudden oak death. Um, Out of Berkeley, they come up here to this area. They look at trees. They have citizen scientists, in other words, neighbors reporting on neighbors if there's the appearance of any oak trees that have sudden oak death on them. Now, sudden oak death is carried by water molecules and spread through the air in the wind. Now, when we've gone to these meetings and we've asked them about the humidity that's created over the coastline. We're not telling them at this point that this is weather modification, but we ask them what about the humidity that we see on the coastline and how does that contribute to sudden oak death? And they would said, certainly, this will help to disease the trees. We have millions of trees, not just oak trees, but millions and millions of trees nationwide that are dropping dead because of sudden death from the chemtrails. And uh, there's a lot of t- conversation on prior YouTubes about that. But they're um, pointing to that as a potential cause for these fires, which is not correct. I also want to say on the front page of another paper up here, days after the fire, there's a picture of a um, an aerial drop. A plane is um, flying, uh, doing a, a retardant dump over an area that um, that burned. And uh, it's unbelievable to watch and look at this picture. But it says under that picture on the front page, climate changed. Global warming presents a new era of fire danger. Now, we're being told here that we are in a terrifying, quote, unquote, terrifying new normal. They're telling all of us this globally, that we're living in a new climate with new dangers. And I can only say to you that this is bringing in what I'm going to be talking about right now. And um, I'm going to talk about this. It's very, very important, and I'm jumping a little ahead because of time, uh, Daniel, and I really want to get this in, and we can pick this up on a prior conversation as well. But many of you have heard the conversations and YouTubes I have up on the NASA war plan. You need to go back and listen to some of those um, interviews and discussions about that. But I do want to tell you on page 13 of the NASA war war plan, it talks about the um, technical ages and technological ages of humankind. And it starts out by saying hunter-gatherers were nature provided. Then it goes into the next phase, agriculture, controlled nature, plant and animals. Then the next uh, technological plan was the Industrial Revolution, manufactured agriculture. The the, um, current plan that we're in is IT, the Internet of Things, 
uh, biomedical advancements and automating. That's this and industry and agriculture all being automated. The final plan of uh, technical ages of humankind is virtual, robotization, Internet of Things, biomedical, nano, industry for everything. Now, I'm going to read this to you because this expounds further uh, than the NASA war plan, and this is thought-provoking at best. The information is data-driven, and it will say that in the NASA war plan at the beginning, which is about cyborgs, robots, and humans. That's what the NASA plan is about. And that plan was delivered as a PowerPoint two months before 9-11 by um, the chief Langley Research researcher in Langley Research, the NASA uh, Langley Research Director. Uh, and now I'm going to read this to you. The information is data-driven and is based on deep research and reporting, not speculation, alarmism, naive optimism, or blue sky projection. It represents the culmination of a multi-year effort to investigate, decipher, and present the best available evidence and what the world's leading experts tell us about the future we are now in the process of creating. There is a clear consensus. That's part of global speak, consensus. There is a clear consensus that the future now emerging will be extremely different from anything we have ever known in the past. It is a difference not of degree, but of kind. There is no prior period of change that remotely resembles what humanity is about to experience. We have gone through revolutionary periods of change before, but none as powerful or as pregnant with the fraternal twins of peril and opportunity as the ones that are becoming and beginning to unfold now. Nor have we experienced so many revolutionary changes unfolding simultaneously and converging with one another. And I hear a break coming up, and I will uh, discuss this a little further on the other side, Daniel. Here we go. Peril and opportunity. Stay tuned. Four-minute break. Continuing with Deborah Tavares, StopTheCrime.net, PrimaryWater.org, important things to look at. She is breaking down the control grid and the weather modification and whatever you want to call it. She's breaking it down. She's going to talk about the end result. I'll just continue on. Deborah, continue right where you were. God bless you. NASA war plan. Yes, I was talking about expanding upon the uh, NASA war plan, and I'm going to um, just tell you this right now, that the emergence of a planet-wide electronic communications grid is now connecting the thoughts and feelings of billions of people and linking them to rapidly expanding volumes of data to a fast-growing web of sensors being embedded ubiquitously throughout the world and to increasingly intelligence devices, robots, thinking machines, the smartest of which already exceed the capabilities of humans in performing a growing list of discrete mental tasks and may soon surpass humans in manifestations of intelligence, we have always assumed as humans we would remain the unique province of our species. Then, the emergence of a revolutionary new set of powerful biological and biochemical genetic and material science technologies that have been enabling the scientist to reconstitute the molecular design of all solid matter, reweave the fabric of life itself, alter the physical form, traits, characteristics, and properties of plants, animals, and humans, and seize active control, listen to this, seize active control over evolution, crossing the ancient lines dividing the species and invent entirely new ones, never imagined in nature. So this is what has been the long sought out dream of those drunken with power and money 
and their hearts filled with evil and absolutely no concern for life at all. And we're reminded here in the FBI director's warning uh, back in 1956, which was um, J. Edgar Hoover. He said, the individual is handicapped by, the, by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. The American mind simply has not come to the realization of the evil which has been introduced into our midst. It rejects even the assumption that human creatures could espouse a philosophy which must ultimately destroy all that is good and decent. And I can only say at this moment, Daniel, with what I'm going to talk about next, we all must live in right, con- right conduct. We must do the next best right thing because we are facing the unthinkable. And we are, think- we are facing the inability to think. And we're going to have to remain close with family and friends. It has been advised that people travel in pairs because of the police state that we are in and the fact that there are many uh, community uh, deep state um, purveyors out there that are uh, set on organized gang stalking and electronic entrainment and harsh, harsh cruelty and torture to millions of targeted individuals, not only in the United States, but in and overseas as well. And I covered many, many targeted individuals on my Rents Radio Network. I would request that everybody become familiar with what is happening because we, all of us, are going to be targeted like that. And we will not be able to have free will. A few years ago, I found on the WhiteHouse.gov website uh, a map, and it was in a 12-page document. And it was a map showing the United States, and around the perimeter uh, of the United States, it showed um, electromagnetic fields being set up. And um, it was um, the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, and this was July the 20th of 2012. And it talks about quantum computers, and what we know is quantum computers is mind theft. It's invasion of the human brain with artificial intelligence that controls specific thoughts, emotions, and directing physical actions into unsuspecting human beings. And I would recommend you watch The Cooking of Humanity, where I discuss this document with Barry Trower, The Cooking of Humanity, on YouTube. I hear a break coming We'll be up. right back. Yeah, we'll be right back after this five-minute break. Deborah Tavares, what is the end game? My God, are you listening to what she's saying? Stay tuned. website where all the great products Joyce uh, 20 years ago brought together to help you in your life. Please uh, look over the selections. Give Jay a call, 877-817-9829, 877-817-9829. And anything, especially for New Mana, it's all on discount at thepowermall.com. Call Jay, 877-817-9829. Getting back to uh, Deborah Tavares. Continue on, Deborah. You're you're painting a pretty dire, grim picture here. But uh, go ahead and uh, complete what you wanted. We're saying. Stand. This is the depth of the documents that we have researched and that are available for everyone to find if they found them too. But right now, I want to pause and I want to go over some of the effects that we're going to be feeling from this electromagnetic grid that we will and are all suffering from now. And when I mentioned that we need to travel together, we do, because um, we are in that kind of danger. It would be like taking a swim out beyond the breakers in the ocean with nobody on shore to see if you were okay, pulled out to sea by a riptide, etc. 
But here are some of the things that we're going to be feeling, and many are already, and Big Pharma is there to help you out. Confusion. Now, we know that um, the dementia and Alzheimer's is now being created environmentally. We've been told that there will be millions of people affected, uh, the baby boomers, in dementia and Alzheimer's. This is all part of a weaponized opportunity for Big Pharma to make profits off of our dead and dying elderly people that have these diseases. I, I, I don't say this lightly. I have empathy for anyone that's listening that is suffering with a family member that has this kind of infliction because I also know, as many of you know, that autism is the same thing. It was an environmentally created group and class of population, make no mistake, when you have one in 50 births born on the autistic spectrum, that eliminates the ability to have reciprocal emotions and feelings. You have designed a class of people that can push these buttons that we're going to be experiencing with all of these drone assaults overseas, etc. This is very, very dangerous times. And this is, of course, not including all of the electromagnetic uh, robberies of our brains and minds and free will. But getting to some of the symptoms, important. So confusion, short-term memory loss, inability to focus, brain fog, sluggish thinking, difficulty concentrating, headaches. Now, for those of you that are using your cell phones, put them down. Don't hold them. In the very, very fine print that you don't read, it says don't have them any closer than an inch from your body. That means not even holding them in your hands or putting them in your back pocket. Also understand that if you have belt buckles, if you have bobby pins, under wire bras, if you sleep on wire mattress box springs, you are getting irradiated by the dirty electricity that comes out of your walls as it's pumped through your internal housing wire from the cell phone towers. But migraines, vision disruption, eye problems, eye pain, cataracts, head or chest pressure, allergies, difficulty breathing, respiratory problems, slow reaction time. We're going to have many, many more car accidents, many work-related accidents as well. Sleep disruption. We know uh, that certainly they have been amping up the cell phone towers, and they can do this with our smart meters individually on our homes to increase the frequencies that disrupt our sleep breaking us out of the deep sleep necessary for immune uh, support. Insomnia, night sweats, nightmares, dizziness, disorientation, balance problems. There's many, many people now having balance problems. Anxiety, depression, suicide, tension, irritability, tremors, nervousness, seizures, vertigo, Nausea, vomiting, flu-like symptoms, digestive difficulties. I'm going to stop. This list goes on and on. You can go to StopTheCrime.net. You can go to the Smart Meter uh, website, and you can download this list for yourself. But I will say that it includes violent behavior, autism, ADHD, weakened immune systems, physical weaknesses and pain, high blood pressure, leg cramps. Now, we... Um, happened uh, a couple of years ago while we were at a uh, convention in San Jose. We ended up being able to be in a 20-seat uh, roundtable discussion with some big pharma rep, uh, representatives. How we were able to stay there and sit there is beyond me. But we there we were, my husband and I, and we were listening to their strategies on rebranding uh, pharmaceuticals. And their goal for rebranding pharmaceuticals is to create the idea that it is food, that it is food. So, uh, of course, uh, itching and chapped skin, um, benign uh, urinary fibroid tumors, bone loss, dehydration, kidney damage, DNA breakage, ch changes in genetic makeup. It shuts down our cells. We have cell death, leg cramps, stiff neck or back, circulation problems. The list goes on and on and on. Now, I'm going to share with you this. I've read this many, many times on air, but it bears repeating because this is critically important. This came out of a meeting out of New York City in the winter of 1994. Quote, 
Therefore, 1995 will be the year where massive doses of electronic mind control programming, thought intrusion, and brain biogenetic manipulations will commence in large scale. These projects are no longer experimental. They are fully operational, and field testing is over. The entire arsenal of frequencies will be unloaded on the USA, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and Mexico as part of Stage 1 of the first protocol. And it includes these, these projects, um, Project Woodpecker, Woodpecker uh, Project Buzzsaw, Videodrome, Subliminal, Sonic Pulses, Holograms, Visions, Voices, which is V2K, and Strange Psychokinetic Phenomenon. They caution, they say, beware of TVs, computers, movies, radios, and phones, all books, magazines, newspapers, printed advertisements, and posters will also contain the encrypted subliminal holograms. Now, we've seen that. You can go online. You can look at the subliminal holograms in the Disney cartoons, for an example. But I'm going on with this. In addition to the obvious programming of commercial consumerism and marketing, reason behind all the subliminals and electronically compressed information in movies, commercial television, Hollywood videos, radio and telephones, and now encrypted in printed matter, this all affects the brain's neural networks and functions through select frequencies and their harmonics to diminish our will, the will of individuality, creativity, and of the individual. Furthermore, they say the protocols intended to give, in essence, the commands of obey the law, do not question authority. Government is your God. Do as you are told. Also, erotic thoughts of anger, fear, depression, and listen to this, and wanton sexuality are also included. This causes utter confusion in individuals who don't know where these strange thoughts are coming from. So now you all do. You've been told this is coming a long time ago. It is here. And I'm going to refer everyone to a song. I interviewed this targeted individual. He wrote this song, and it's called Waves of Darkness. Waves of Darkness. Listen to the words very carefully. You're hearing the ex experiences of what it is like to be targeted. They get into your dreams. They, you're spoken to by voice to skull. These people are shot with directed energy weapons that are torturing people. I get calls. We get calls. We've talked to targeted individuals. These people are in pain, and they're being targeted. And we believe that they are mentally ill. That is the narrative. Just like every one of you that is listening to this program right now, this is conspiracy. When all of those that don't understand reality are, in fact, in the conspiracy. So we have to get this information out to those that will listen. We have to stay together. It requires that we stay together and protect one another. My last days on the Rinse Radio Network was shortly after Jeff Rinse was assaulted by weapons and had a horrible auto wreck. You may remember that. And you will hear me discuss that on the plan to burn up Northern California because I was helping Jeff with his radio programming time to get that information out when he was really in a difficult place. But I want to go Hold on. that thought, Deborah. We got one last segment after this uh, three-minute break. Stay tuned. Four-minute break. Stay tuned. We have uh, about nine minutes left in the broadcast. The websites are stopthecrime.net, primarywater.org. Deborah Tavares, I got three questions for you, and then you take the floor. One is the document that you read before the last break. What was that document? Two, then what... What can we do about this? Give us some hope, and then what would you suggest, you know, in everyday life? Uh, what changes should we make? So those are the three questions. Well, the document, I, I what would, can we I, do, and everyday changes. Right. 
starting with the last question, what can we do in everyday life? Certainly reduce your cell phone and any wireless technology that you have gotten brain addictive in using. Go and get some Mylar. You can find that in any camping supply. For $4, you can get a package large enough to wrap up your cell phones. Do not keep your cell phones in your homes. Do not use them in your cars because that is like being inside a Faraday cage. The frequencies bounce exponentially through your body while you're on your phones in your cars. And besides, it's unsafe to be on your cell phone and your wireless technology anyway. But wrap them up in Mylar. Call uh, your cell phone from another phone, and it, it hopefully won't ring. If it does, you need more Mylar wrapped around it. You can also put your cell phones in your microwave for those of you that are still cooking your food and changing the uh, the food uh, quality in your microwave, but you can put your cell phone in the microwave, close the door. Obviously, don't turn the, self, the microwave on. Call your cell phone from another phone. If it rings, never use your microwave again. It leaks. Um, but I can tell you that in every day, uh, travel with people that you know that have some inkling of what we face as humanity. Um, the hope and what we can do again, unplugging from technology. And uh, what were the other what were the other questions? What was the document you were reading from before okay, the break? You're be... reading a document about 1995. Yes. Okay. That is on StopTheCrime.net. If you um, scroll to um, our flyers, um, that is on our full page flyer, and it is there. So you can find it on the flyer on StopTheCrime.net. I hope I answered all the questions because given the short amount of time, I want to leap into this and then certainly come back on the program and discuss this latest understanding more fully. We need to understand the next frontier of climate change, and it is resilience. We need to understand that we're emerging now into wealth redistribution and equality and, e and equitable and fairness. And, w and in our papers here in Northern California, they're working on inequal inequality, which they say our communities here are disproportionately um, different in classes, in, in education, in financial capabilities, and they're going to work. They say there are many issues of inequality, inequality in our community. We are tackling before the fire. But since the fire, it is clear we must accelerate our efforts to the disparities we only have been discussed and now have grown bigger. Now, I will tell you, when we traveled to Russia, we saw what communal living looked like. We saw what it looked like when homes of private owners were taken during the war and after, and those owners were shot and killed and buried in unmarked graves on, on um, estates. The owners that owned these estates were likely killed as well. And um, we saw what that looked like with families being uh, pushed into, um, maybe it was a five-bedroom house, for example. There would be one family in each bedroom. They would communally share one bathroom, the one we went through, and a kitchen. They would have some various stoves. Um, it, these people were given these houses, and they still live in these today. So I can tell you this is where we're headed. But it's important to understand the assault techniques that we face right now with climate change, and it's the false policies of resilience. And here's what they're saying about it. This is through the Rockefeller Foundation. And Rockefeller, along with uh, Rothschild and many of the corporate entities that are snarling up our country, are involved in this. First, I want to say that Rock, Rock, uh, Rockefeller and Rothschild are merging into the United States to transform the United States. We are being told that they are headed here now to invest and to restructure North America, restructure North America. So when I looked into what their restructuring plans were, it was resilience. And here's what they're telling us. As the world turns its attention to the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Paris, the global community is hoping for fresh ideas to solve our increasing climate-related challenges. We know that climate accelerates and complicates almost every other problem. Now, of course, this is global 
weather control. And, and they say that it, it uh, accelerates food insecurity and water scarcity. Again, we have primary water. If you don't know what water uh, comes from, you need to go to the website primarywater.org. They're turning pro- uh, water into peak water, just like they did peak oil. And they talk about how there will be a sectarian conflicts and refugee crises around the world. This is not to talk about all the homelessness that is increasing. So these resilient plans are nothing more than inflexible and rigid plans in our communities to wire up our communities to, to, to create mass mind control of behaviors. They will be able to and are now already controlling moods. We know from a number of whistleblowers in private security firms that they are accelerating the mind control frequencies in many of the major cities across the country and globally. Many of you have heard about how they can um, de- cause a crowd to leave because of acoustic sound. We also recently heard about the assault on the politicians in Cuba. And so these are frequencies, this is what is happening, and this is trauma-based mind control. And the smart cities, the UN Agenda 21 of the human settlement zones, as I call them, are trauma-based mind control encampments for total enslavement of our minds. This is mind capture. This is the goal. A one mind, a global brain through the use of frequencies to secure Mm. all of us. We have about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes left in the broadcast. Uh, You've painted quite a... I mean, this is like a punch to the gut, the depth of this and, and the, the details with which you're able to express this. I commend you. I thank you. Uh, is there something to leave us on a happy note? Where is this going to end? How are we going to overcome this? Well, um, we have to live, I believe, one day at a time. We have to do the right thing. We have to make the next right choices every single day. We have to love our families and be grateful for what we have in this moment, this day, because this is where we are. We're in this day. We, we, I am not espousing fear. This is not about fear. This is about knowing what you can do. And avoiding wireless technologies is it. It is really our last hope to have any kind of freedom at all, which we don't have anyway, but at least to not have our minds captured. So I would leave everyone that's listening on that note, Daniel, and I really appreciate the opportunity to get this information out. When I come on next, I will go into more detail on resilience. Uh, resiliency. All right. God bless you. Stopthecrime.net. Please go on there and sign up. We'll.